So instead of looking at the, blaming the economic disparity, okay, they're going to look for someone to take their anger out on. And so unfortunately, as bad as it is, my projection is that the attack on the Asians will get worse because of this reason. And until we actually get to the heart of what's causing all these, all the Americans to suffer, okay? If not us, they're gonna find some other scapegoat ethnic group. It's just that, you know, now it's our turn. So it's really, I think it's really important that all the victimized groups, right? Whether it's Black Lives Matter, Asians Matter, you know, Asians and whatnot, or brown people or Native Americans, uh, I think we all need to realize that we're all victims of the same thing. And that now there's nothing that the overall system would want more than the groups to fight among each other instead of uniting. Um, so on top of that, what little I know about economy is that in the future, there is going to be economic, increased economic war with China between the United States. So now that's going to give another reason to scapegoat Asians. So to me, I see this as just the beginning of things getting even worse for Asian Americans, not the beginning. And as much as we're putting in the effort, okay, to try to uh, educate and those who've been uh, traumatized, try to help them heal. I think that this is just the beginning of a war that's going to continue to escalate. And, uh, and it's also, you, know, you can't deny the fact that the pandemic did start in China. Uh, you can't deny that. But it is the nature of human nature to group people together and not separate the government from the people. So it's the Chinese government that did a lousy job of containing it, which caused it to spread all over the world. But who gets blamed? The citizens who them Chinese citizens were themselves victims. So it's understanding all this that happens where it's you know, it's human nature to blame a group of people instead of understanding the nuances of the difference between it's the the mistakes that the leaders have made, and then lumping all the citizens as if they did it together. It's, even the Chinese citizens are just as much victims. So, uh, yeah, I think all the groups and, uh, you know, I guess, uh, including the, uh, the gender uh, uh, discriminated groups also, that uh, to really understand that uh, it is the human suffering that we need to attack. And until that's attacked, even if we survive this round, there's gonna be another round where Asians will be targeted again, because as long as they're suffering, humanity will look for someone to blame. And so little examples of things we could do is much more, more ethnic studies in schools so that, so that Asians do not become just the, uh, Asians become more nuanced, just like we need uh, studies about uh, you know, different gender identity and whatnot. Okay? We need to educate the public so that they don't get easily tricked by mass media into blaming one group. Uh, also, it's easy when you capture the person that perpetrated the crime, it's easy to then attack them and put them in jail forever. But, to understand, but if you realize they're the victim, what makes more sense is uh, what they call restorative justice. Instead of locking them up, do education, educate those people, right? So, so the concept of uh, restorative uh, justice, economic studies, I mean, ethnic studies in school, starting elementary school, because it's in middle school, in when you're a teenager, that your psychology start to get more rigid. So you have to catch them before, before high school. Uh, and my, unfortunately, my pessimism is that unless economic disparity improves uh, and as the economic battle with China escalates, unfortunately, 
I see the situation getting for worse for Asians, not better. Uh, okay, I could ramble on, but I'll try to stop, so I'll stop. Thank you, Dr. Kim. And uh, not 